we are looking at another industry cooking class or show or whatever you want to call it here on Monday. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with this, I am your host, Dave Nelson, and I do this pretend kitchen show in my home every Monday at 4 p.m. Okay. Um, today, I'm going to be laying down my thoughts on basil pesto, but uh, I wanted to take this time to talk about what the heck I've been doing around here. Okay. It seems, you know, just a little bit sad, I know. A grown man pretending to host a homemade TV show all alone in his house, right? You know, it, it's kind of silly. I'll just say it, right? But, uh, you know, you have to admit, it's not nearly as sad as most guys' midlife crises, crises, crises. I think that's it, crises, okay? Anyway, it was either this or um, accept that offer to play lead banjo ukulele in a Pink Floyd country fusion band, okay? Now that I felt would be a little too sad for this fellow, this guy right here, okay? But, you know, this, this right here, I do this for a reason. I just get even sadder when I think of grown adults, people that consider themselves foodies even, right? They don't know how to cook their way out of a paper bag. And so I just started doing this. That's what kind of drives me to cram my delicious, delicious opinions down the viewer's throats on a weekly basis. So here it is. I'm, I'm, I'm just back from a little break and I'm ready to get back into the saddest little fake homemade cooking show in the Pacific Northwest. Okay. But first, before we really get into the show, I do have a couple of administrative details, administrative. I like saying it that way. Right. Um, and I need to take care of those first. Okay. So a bit of background on the show. I'm a longtime chef and I am a culinary teacher. I've been bringing my culinary school lectures to the people on the internet since the start of the COVID shutdown. Um, in these shows, you're not going to see slick, quick cuts that breeze over crucial cooking steps or needed nuances of a process. These very sad shows also are not about recipes, okay? I think everybody already knows how to follow a recipe. This has been my thing for years and years. I never taught recipes to my students. I was always teaching cooking techniques. My students already knew how to read recipes when they showed up at culinary school. I just have no interest in talking about recipes, but I do love to talk about how to actually cook, okay? Now, these fake shows are live. They're a little rough at times, okay? And I can be, you know, kind of a jackass at times, truly, right? But when you look at it, the techniques and the kitchen wisdom that I'm laying down is pretty rock solid. Um, I want you people to think of this as a culinary school hack, hashtag hacking culinary school. And so that's kind of what this is all about. I'm, I'm just laying down all my old culinary school lectures, right? As a companion piece to the show, I started a Facebook community, industry cooking community for chefs, teachers, home cooks to share their ideas and to use this, the, the group as kind of a platform to put folks projects out there, their plates out there, so they can share them with the world. If they got businesses, they can do it. I've got instructors over there, culinary instructors making comments and giving advice and things. It's actually kind of a cool group, okay? It's it's interactive as they say, okay? So, you know, if you haven't been over there, right, to check out the community, you, you're probably watching it right now, right, frankly, but if you haven't been over there, uh, please do so, check it out, okay? Um, if you'd like to check out show archives, I got a ton of them, I got a ton of them, okay? Along with some exclusive industry cooking content over there at the industry cooking on YouTube. Look that up. I have acres of wall to wall kitchen knowledge just busting down the door over there. It's laying around for you to pick up and cram straight into your frontal food loaf. Okay. Final announcement. Okay. Again, we have our comment line over here. Uh, I love seeing the chef showing up here. I love it. There's another chef showing up, right? Um, uh, uh, we have our comment line. If you guys are into it, please add to the conversation here, throw out questions, comments, thoughts, feelings, prayers, whatever it is, right? Uh, just, just don't be mean because it is a sad little show, okay? We always have a much better show when I don't cry, okay? So thus endeth the morning announcement for this episode, okay? I wanna get into tonight's show. I have some very, very hurt opinions on pesto and they were burning me up inside, okay? We are basically talking about pesto here. Uh, the mother green sauce of Northern Italy, okay? Um, it's just like the name sounds, basically. Uh, pesto is very paste-like, if you've never seen it. I can't imagine there's too many people that haven't, but I suppose there are a few, okay? Um, ingredients in a typical traditional pesto are very, very simple. You'll see a little variations here and there, but basically we are looking at basil, 
garlic, you know, because when you think about it, basil and garlic, I mean, really, right? It, it just makes sense, right? So basil and garlic. Also, you're going to see a little bit of Parmesan in there, maybe a little Reggiano Parmigiano, you know, the real stuff, okay? Typically, you're going to see some pine nuts in there or some other kind of nuts, pine nuts, most traditional, and then also olive oil. It's five ingredients. It's super easy, okay? And so this is going to be a, actually a very quick class today, okay? These are the ingredients of a traditional pesto, as I said, but you can vary the ingredients in so many ways to create a veritable pantheon. Okay, I like using that word pantheon because it's Italian, right? And I like the Romans, right? Uh, a pantheon of pesto type sauces. There's tons of these out there, right? Like puree paste style sauces. We're gonna talk about all that stuff. We're gonna cover variations later on in the show, but the next important aspect is the technique about pesto, right? There's not one way to make it. Um, when you are looking pesto, you're going to see uh, a traditional method, which is a mortar and pestle. Okay. I got a couple of mortar pestles here. Okay. I got one, I got two. Let me, let me go on down here. I got two of them on the table here. Okay. And I'm actually not going to use these things, but many people say it just doesn't taste the same if you don't use a mortar and pestle. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and call bullshit on that one. Okay. I really don't see any difference in using a mortar and pestle uh, versus a food processor or another method that we're going to talk about next. Okay. But when you are getting a mortar and pestle, if you are using this one, you don't want one that's real smooth inside. Usually the marble ones can be a little bit rough inside. This one's got a little roughness. I think this one's made out of soapstone. This breaks real easy. Uh, this other one is a marble one, and it's got just some nice ridges in there that really, really work against the pestle uh, to break things down, break ingredients down, okay? So um, mortar and pestle, if you have the time, if you want to do it a little more traditionally, it does come out a little chunkier. You might get some long basil pieces in there and things like that, uh, but um, ultimately, um, you, you've got some people that are just going to say, oh my gosh, you're using a, a food processor or a blender or something like that. It's sacrilege, right? You know, so for what it's worth, mortar and pestle, I don't know if you want to watch a 20 minute pesto class today. I'm going to shorten things up. Okay. Um, now, another version of this, uh, I have an Italian buddy. Okay. He, this dude's from the old country and he insists that you're going to need to make it with a chef's knife on a cutting board. And that's what his students all saw. It was on a cutting board and he's just pouring everything on, you know, pouring the oil on there and just chopping it and chopping it. Um, so he, he likes this method. I think because that's kind of how his Nana made it, okay? And so uh, uh, there's the, the cutting board method, okay? But most chefs out there in the industry, and I think most people at home don't have, that don't have a lot of time, you're probably gonna use a food processor or a blender. This is gonna work either way. And by the way, when you're making purees, um, blenders tend to be a better tool for a puree than, a, than a, a food processor, right? I got a food processor bowl here, and it's a pretty narrow one, but most food processors are a little bit bigger, uh, big, bigger diameter, right? Um, when you when you are chasing ingredients around in that large diameter, it's kind of hard to for the blades to work against them, right? But when you're using a blender, a blender is really, really narrow and those ingredients don't have anywhere to go. So they just get pulled down this vortex as the blender blades are going and they're really going to puree efficiently, okay? When you need a puree, a blender is your friend. Okay, but uh, I'm, today I'm going to be using a, a food processor just in the interest of brevity. And I think that's what most people are probably using it, uh, these days. Okay, so um, I'm about ready to get into this. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. Okay, now um, I don't think I've ever measured my ingredients for a pesto in my life. Okay, I guess uh, uh, the idea is just using approximate amounts, okay? But um, I'm gonna kind of lay some amounts on you here just to get things started, okay? So here we go. For pesto, there we go, I can see it a little better. For pesto, um, we got basil, two large bunches of basil. Now, sometimes you get a little teeny basil, they sell it in those little teeny plastic clamshells in the supermarket. That's about a third of a bunch of basil, okay? The bunches I got today, I got them over at a farmer's market. I was over in Point Ruston and Tacoma. Just beautiful, huge bunches of basil, okay? So I'm using two large bunches of basil today. If you're getting small bunches, maybe go four to six of those little bunches, okay? Um, garlic in there, two to three cloves. You want to be uh, kind of careful with the garlic. You can overdo this. One thing about pesto is um, we don't always cook it. Sometimes we're just tossing 
say our pasta in some pesto doesn't go into a pan and that raw garlic can get a little strong. Um, so uh, two to five cloves, whatever you're into. I've got pretty small cloves here. So I wound up going with four cloves. That's what you're gonna see me use, okay? Um, Parmesan cheese, the Parmesan Reggiano, okay? Um, is the cheese of choice for this, but you can switch those cheeses up. I'm gonna give you some different ideas about that later, okay? But I got some nice grated cheese. Uh, another thing about the cheese, notice that I've got it in um, ounces there. I am um, weighing this. I'm not getting two ounces in a measuring cup or anything. That would be the tiniest bit of cheese. Two ounces of cheese, once you shred it up, it's gonna fill like a cup, okay? So it's a good amount of cheese, okay? And then I've got nuts, typically pine nuts. Today I'm gonna use walnuts, which is also a very, very common substitute for those pine nuts. So I'm gonna do a, a walnut version today. I'm also, you're gonna see me throw some seeds in there because I made some pesto the other day. It's summertime and I tend to just keep cranking out batches of pesto and filling up my freezer. So I have pesto all, uh, all winter long, right? And so uh, the nuts I'm using, I, I made a batch the other day. I used walnuts and a few different seeds in there just to kind of add some nutrients in there. Uh, seeds, high in nutrients, very nutrient dense. So I threw that in there and I'm using about three ounces of that. And then finally, olive oil. Again, let me move my finger here. One ounce of olive oil. And again, these are approximate amounts just to get you started, right? Okay, you're gonna be using the olive oil. The way I kind of describe this, I'm gonna set this down. It's one ounce, okay? I'm gonna set this down. The way I describe my olive oil is I use it as a tool so I get the right, until I see the right consistency in the uh, uh, food processor, right? If I if the ingredients are all just kind of stuck to the sides, I use that oil to, as a tool to kind of just loosen things up so they start spinning around in there. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a little while. But otherwise, there it is. It's like, what is it? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six ingredients there. I'm gonna throw in a little salt and pepper. I never count those, okay? But uh, very, very simple basil pesto recipe. There are other ingredients and you'll see that you will see in, uh, in other people's pestos, okay? I'm gonna kind of talk about some of the more common ingredients that you might see in pestos later on when I get into variations on this, right? We're gonna talk about a lot of different pesto style sauces because quite frankly, it's not gonna take me that long to bang this out, especially in a food processor, okay? So um, let's see, I think that's it. I'm gonna start pulling out ingredients and we're gonna take a look at each one, one at a time that I got here, okay? I'm gonna cook a little pasta today to go along with my pesto, okay? Because all of these uh, shows are really, really behind the whole show. It's about dinner for myself and my wife, okay? And so uh, that's what you're gonna see here in a little bit. I got a little uh, water on the fire. It's gonna come up to a boil and I'm gonna drop some pasta in there in just one minute and get that going while I'm making this, okay? All right, so let's take a look at these ingredients going down. So first of all is my basil, two large bunches of basil, as I said. Now I cleaned most of this and I rinsed it really, really well. When I'm rinsing greens, by the way, let me, let me get back up here. When I'm rinsing greens, fill your sink all the way up and get your basil or lettuce greens or whatever it is that you're working with and kind of agitate them. That's the word, right? Agitate them a little bit and then let them set. Your greens are gonna float to the top and all the funk is gonna sink to the bottom and then gently pull them off the top and you're gonna leave all the nastiness behind. Okay. If it's still a little gritty, if you're washing spinach or something like that, it can be super sandy, right? So um, when we're doing spinach, we tend to maybe just pull that out, drain that water, fill up the sink again, and throw your spinach in there and agitate it. Let it sit, let the sand or particles fall down to the bottom, the funk, and then pull your spinach out. Do that two, three, four times, however many times you need it in your spinach, greens, basil, whatever it is that you're doing, uh, that you're washing is going to be clean. Okay. So back to my basil, okay? You can see, very beautiful. I got quite a bit of basil out of those two large bunches. And I left one stem intact here. And I wanted to kind of show you, there's a few flower tops on there. And there are also stems. Now, when I go through this, I really do want just the sweet leaves. They, they often call basil sweet basil, don't they, right? I tend to find that I leave stems in there and I leave those flower tops in there, I feel like they have this weird astringency to them that I'm not really fond of, okay? Hey, Chef Jim, good to see you, sir. Good to see you another week. Um, uh, if you made an entire batch of pesto with just the tops, it's gonna taste funk, okay? So I tend to pick those guys out and just use, kick them off to the curb, and I'm just gonna use the sweet, sweet basil leaves here, okay? So let me just run through this real quick. There was a couple of those funky flower tops on there and a bunch of stem. So I wanna get rid of all that, just using the tender, tender leaves, tender sweet. Boom, 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 almost done. I just kinda of wanted to show you those tops. Otherwise I got most everything kinda of prepped today. 
All right, so I'm gonna save that. Um, I make stocks all the time and those stems work very well in stocks. So you don't have all this green chlorophyll in there that's gonna turn your stock green and also make it bitter as well when you make a stock out of it. I'm just kind of looking through, seeing if I got any big chunky stems. There's one right there. There's another little piece of stem. Otherwise, I just got some pretty darn clean leaves in there, okay? So that's my basil. The next thing is my garlic. I told you I had about uh, four cloves of it. They're kind of small cloves, so there they are right there. I have got some Parmesan cheese, okay? Grate it all up. It's very, very nice, but sometimes these long shreds, the uh, my food processor doesn't break them down uh, in the mix, so I tend to, well, you'll see what I do in a minute. Uh, let's see the next thing are my nuts. I've just got some walnuts today. I'm going to be using those, but I'm also going to add a little bit of seed. Again, I, I kind of throw this. I have these seed blends, okay? This is pumpkin and sunflower, and I just keep it in my, my cupboard here. And I also have a blend of flax seed and sesame seeds, right? And so I'm just going to give, throw in about a tablespoon of these guys too, and they're going to blend right in with everything else. Now, some people will toast these nuts before they make the pesto. Other people don't. I don't know if you'll hear other people talking about this, but I tend to toast these when I use certain applications, but I don't toast them in other applications. For instance, a couple of weeks ago, I used a, I did a pizza, right? Um, I did a pesto pizza a few weeks ago. And when I did that, I didn't really want a pesto where the nuts had already been toasted because my pesto is spread out on that pizza. It goes into a dry oven and those nuts that are in the pesto, they can toast even more. If I have them really, really toasty in the beginning, and I throw them in the oven on a pizza, or let's say I toss chicken in them and then throw chicken on the grill. Now those nuts are gonna start really uh, uh, toasting and, and getting sour. And what is my refrigerator doing? What are you doing, buddy? Stop that. Oh, my door was open. It was telling me my door was open. Anyway, so there it is. I have uh, my walnuts along with some, so far, some pumpkin seeds and some uh, sunflower seeds, and now I got a few flax seeds and some sesame seeds to go in, okay? By the way, look at this. All of these nuts, all of this cheese, we're talking a protein source here for your meals, right? Think about the old days when protein was hard to come by. This pesto made, uh, throwing these things in your pesto made a little bit of sense, okay? Uh, now, for my oils, um, the oil's important here. You, you, we want to use an extra virgin olive oil traditionally, okay? Um, when we're doing this, the Italian oil that they use in this is typically a very, very soft oil, often, often uh, described as buttery, right? Um, when you get our extra virgin olive oil or California stuff, often it's like, like spicy, peppery, often described as that. Um, that's not the oil we use. And so what I've got here is some of that California olive oil. This is a little spicy, peppery. I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of this and I'm gonna cheat and use just a little bit of pure olive oil right here. I'm trying not to show brands actually, right? So I'm gonna use a little combination here, a little bit of the extra virgin to get that flavor of extra virgin olive oil, but I don't want too much. I wanna kind of soften it with a little of this. If you've got a, a nice, uh, Italian olive oil, specifically a Northern Italian olive oil. Um, that's really where this pesto comes from. And that is the classic stuff that you would use. Okay, so I'm gonna set those aside for now. I think that is all my ingredients, except for a little bit of salt and I'm gonna throw in a little pepper as well. Okay, and that's my pesto. I'm gonna start doing this, okay? Now, oftentimes you'll see people uh, starting their pesto in a food processor as I'm getting ready to do, and they start with the leaves and the leaves are in there for the whole process. Think about basil. I mean, you, you it's so easy to abuse basil. Um, you, 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 harsh language will bruise the stuff, right? And so we basically, I tend to get everything else pureed and then I add my basil in there. So it's in there for the shortest possible time, right? Also, I add, I try and hold off on my oil because the more you spin your oil, whether it's in a blender or whether it's in a food processor or something like that, it actually begins to oxidize and gets that rancid taste. You can actually just spin olive oil in a blender for a while and it's going to taste funky after a while after it, it it aerates and then starts to oxidize over time okay so um uh, i am going to add olive oil kind of near the end and i'm going to work my basil at the end everything else is going to get pureed first okay so uh this is the show right here my ingredients are lined up. I don't want to start with my garlic right now, okay? My garlic is sticky when you chop it up. So I'm going to leave that off to the side. What I want to do is I'm going to kind of break down my cheese first. So I'm going to throw my cheese in there. I probably don't even need all of that. This is a little heavy on cheese. I'm going to ease up on that. And I'm going to pulse this stuff a little bit. So I, I just kind of break it up a little bit. Come on. 
Get on there now. Oh yeah, right. I have two different processors and they work differently. This one just goes straight on. There we are, and I'm gonna pulse it. And when I look at it, it looks like that, that grated cheese that comes out of a can, basically. It's already kind of broken down. It didn't take very long. Next thing I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna work in my seeds and my garlic at the same time. And my garlic, what I would typically like to do is smash the cloves. I'm gonna just do that real quick. Just kind of helps break it down a little bit. So here's a little cutting board. It's the only thing I'm gonna use it for today is smashing my cloves. And then they're going straight on in. I might run my knife through them just a little bit. I just never want to get a big chunk of garlic in there. And these garlic pieces can just kind of spin around with everything else and get lost in the mix. And the blades might have trouble working against them. I've gotten batches of pesto finished and have these big chunks of garlic. So I'm working that garlic in now and I'm just going to start pureeing stuff without the basil. And let me just take one second to uh, start my pasta over here. I've got to make dinner or I'm in trouble. I've got boiling water here. I've got some salt in the water and I got a little olive oil, okay? Nothing fancy. I've talked about making pasta. I did it about two, three weeks ago in, in, in one of these shows, okay? A little pasta in here. And whenever you drop pasta, make sure you got a spoon in your hand. As soon as the pasta hits the water, you want it moving, okay? Don't let the pasta settle down in those first few minutes of cooking. So here we go. I don't wanna to add too much at once. Get a little flare up and I'm gonna hang on to that. That's my strainer. As soon as it hits the water, I'm giving it a stir and I want that heat high so that pasta can start moving in there. While that's going, I'm gonna hit this, puree it, and then we're gonna take another look at that pasta. So let me get the camera down here, there it is. I like that, Michael Marks is out there. He's saying no herbal abuse. I'm gonna steal that line from you, sir, with both of my hands, okay? I'll be using that in the future. You better believe it. Also, Jim Turkinet, uh, he's a chef, one of the longtime chefs uh, back in my hometown of Sacramento. He's been, he's been in the business longer than anybody I know uh, uh, in there as a working chef. And uh, he mentioned no acid. I'm actually going to talk about that in the end. A lot of people work lemon juice in their pesto and I'm gonna talk about why I don't do that, okay? And so here we go. I'm still pureeing. You can see most of this is broken down already. It looks like breadcrumbs in there. I really didn't have to do much. Uh, I'm gonna do it a little more. But that's it, okay? At this point, I'm gonna pop the lid off and I've got all this basil. It's not gonna fit in there at once, so I'm just gonna start working it in, in batch, and that's what you're gonna see. Um, there is no olive oil in there yet, and I haven't added salt. I won't be adding salt until I taste this. That cheese is very salty, right? So let me, let me uh, uh, finish this, and then I'm gonna talk about seasoning, okay? So I'm gonna pack in some basil. Whoa. And slap on my lid. And it goes with the bit with the uh, with the nuts, the garlic, the the um, parmesan. And it's very, very dry in there. Let me show you this. Right? It's not doing much, so I'm kind of just spinning it around. But really, when things aren't moving in your processor, what you want to do is add a little bit of liquid. In this case, our liquid is going to be some olive oil. So I'm going to work a little bit of it in. I'm going to start out with the um, regular olive oil here. Extra virgin olive oil tends to get that oxidized flavor much quicker. So I'm going to finish that. I'm starting with regular olive oil here. By the way, you can go all extra virgin. Just play with this stuff. These aren't hard rules, OK? These are just, this is what I have around my kitchen, OK? So I just put in a tiny bit, probably about two tablespoons of oil in there, and I'm gonna turn it on, and then you're gonna see me add a little more oil until this thing, all the ingredients start spinning in there, and that's what's coming up next. Here we go. You can see it's moving a little bit better. Almost starting to move. moving in the bottom. You can see it's kind of moving in the bottom. A little bit more.
And you can see that as I added that oil, things started working down into it, okay? I'm gonna start, I'm, I think I'm done with the regular olive oil, the pure olive oil, and I'm gonna switch to extra virgin just for the taste of it, okay? I'm not showing labels. And so I'm gonna go a little bit more and we're gonna spin it more and then you'll start seeing me working more basil in. One little scrape. You're going to see me scraping a lot. And then we go again. It's still pretty thick. I'm going to work a little more oil in there. Again, oil is a tool here just to get those ingredients spinning in the food processor. Now it's rolling around. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to try and show that to you. I'm trying to get a good angle. Oh, there you go. You see that action in there, how it's just this mass that's going around in a circle. I used to say it's a snake chasing its tail. That's what I want to see inside my food processor. Now that that basically looks like pesto, I need to work the rest of this basil in. So that's what you're going to see now. I'm just going to start feeding the kitty through this food tube is what we call it, right? This guy right here. Okay. So here we go. As you do this, if it stops spinning, um, go ahead and add a little more oil until it, you get that snake chasing its tail again, okay? I got uh, Chef Derek out there, good to see you. Man, I got mostly chefs out there today. Chefs and celebrities. Uh, another thing you can do to save time, now that it's off, I'm just gonna pop the lid and pack it again like it was in the beginning. And I think I'll have to add a little more oil to this. It's like not one hard thing all the way through. Sometimes, you know, a little more garlic and, and cheese in there, you're going to need more olive oil to get it spinning. Moving around. See what I did there? Threw a little more oil in. What's up, Derek? Oh yeah, I always like seeing the old local chefs out there. Load it in, actually, I, I don't like the food too much. I always throw all of my attachments away for these things. I just like a straight lid like we use in, in restaurant kitchens. The lids are very different on a restaurant food processor. Not so many weird things, just, just a hole in the top. Okay, I'm just gonna cram the rest of this in. We're almost done with this pesto, getting into a seasoning and tasting and all that. Let me give my pasta another, another stir. It's back there very patiently cooking. Oh yeah, it is beautiful. I'm gonna taste one of these noodles, make sure it's all right. Oh, I can tell they're not even, not even close. You can just tell. All right, so just a few little pieces of basil. Oh darn, wouldn't you know it, I just spilled my basil. And there it is. All right, all right. This pesto, ladies and gentlemen, is almost done. Very pert opinions coming up. Mm. Almost there. Almost there. I'm going to give it a little stir, a little scrape. And I am going to have a couple more tubs of pesto to freeze up. This is awesome. And I'm going to have dinner. It's beautiful. Here we go. Clean as you go. And 
and it's looking pretty thick. I like a little flow to my pesto, but that's, yeah, it's, it's pretty close. I'm going to give it a little more oil. I worked in quite a bit more, you saw, than that, than that original one ounce that I talked about. I probably got about two and two and a half in there. And here we go. So again, I really don't like to keep working it and working it once that basil is in there. I want the basil and olive oil to work as, as uh, uh, less than any of the other ingredients. And that's why you saw me kind of puree things up before I really got into the basil. So there it is. It's a nice looking pesto. Okay, beautiful. It's got a nice consistency, but I don't know the taste of it yet. Let me grab a spoon. Hmm. Well, it's a fork. I didn't get much. Oh, I definitely need some uh, salt in there. The cheese wasn't quite there. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Marks out there, he's mentioning spinach, cilantro, any other greens, you better believe it. I was gonna get into the variations here. I I'm just getting ready to, you've anticipated me, sir. Um, absolutely, you can work a little bit of spinach in here to stretch it out. Parsley is super, super common, right? Um, arugula, right? You could do an arugula pesto, maybe mix your ingredients, uh, change up your ingredients, uh, maybe add a little something, a sweet component in there, okay? Uh, because those arugula greens are kind of bitter. I like that sweet going along with the bitter. Um, let's see. So that was a little bit of salt. I'm going to taste it again. Let me crack a little pepper in there too. Let's see, other greens, okay? So parsley arugula. How about a kale pesto? I've seen like uh, um, basil slash kale to add extra nutrients, like super pesto, right? Um, of course, sun-dried tomato, right, is another classic pesto. Sun-dried tomato pesto. Oh my gosh, the 80s. I, I did that so many times for like pasta specials. I thought I was like so slick, man. But, uh, it, you know, you look back and it's just like, oh God, everybody was just doing that, okay? Uh, I'm going to add a little more salt to it too. I can tell I didn't add it. Let me spin it one more time. And I'm gonna give it another little taste. Let's see, another, uh, another green leafy item we could use is a mint pesto. How about a mint pesto, right? You think of like the British mint sauce is almost like a mint pesto. Definitely more salt. Where am I putting it? Right there. And after I've seasoned twice, just, I throw the third one in there. That's where I usually over season. And let me just spin it in there. And you can just stir that in. It takes a little while for this hot, uh, heavy grain salt to dissolve. Try this again. I got to check my pasta. Delicious, okay. That is some pasta, ladies and gentlemen. The thing that you're looking for here, by the way, salt brings out flavor, right? Ask yourself when you're tasting this, do I taste a little cheese back there? Hopefully not too much, right? And yeah, now that I've added enough salt, I can, I can kind of taste that cheese back there, excuse me. Um, I got pesto in all over. Uh, I add that salt and I ask myself if I can taste basil. Well, I certainly hope you can taste basil at this point, right? Uh, do you taste the garlic? Yeah, that salt is bringing that garlic flavor out. And also I am tasting the nuts in the background as well. That salt just brought all four of those flavors out and that's kind of what I'm looking for there. I can taste the olive oil as well, right? I am feeling really good about this. Um, let's see, you need a high oil nut, you mentioned pine nuts and walnuts um gosh i don't know that i always need a high oil nut that's a good question no one's ever asked me that one before but uh um i feel that you could use just about any nut you want to right uh, uh i am i i am using the walnuts today like you saw you saw me working seeds and things like that as far as the nuts go um uh what about a pistachio right um almonds definitely good uh for that right um I'm not sure of the, the various oil contents of those, but uh, I do know that uh, uh, walnuts are high in oil. I guess pine nuts, yeah, when you bake a pine nut, they really do kick out a lot of oil, that's true. I think my pasta is about there. Let me, uh, yeah. Pasta's done, let me go drain that real quick. I'm gonna set up 
uh, draining system so to where I can catch some pasta water because I want to work a little pasta water into my pasta. So I always try and corral that. That's like a restaurant trick. We all kind of adjust sauces with a little pasta water when we're when we're working with that. So let me drain this real quick and I'll get back to my pasta discussion. So that's done. So we were talking about uh, nuts, cashews. Absolutely. Yeah, I've never tried cashews. Do they get kind of a, they have a different texture when you puree them. I, I wonder if that's kind of gives it a different mouthfeel to it. Almost. Cashew might give it a different texture. I've never played with that. Um, I'm wondering. Uh, yes, macadamia nuts for sure. I feel like macadamia is, uh, and pine nuts are, are kind of those neutral tasting nuts that that, you know, if I didn't have pine nuts, macadamias would just like go in there and you probably wouldn't even hardly notice. Uh, very subtle flavors on those. Oh, Andre, good to see you, young lady. She's a, I think you've seen every show uh, uh, that I've done, right? Okay, so I've got pesto, I've got pasta. Uh, let's talk about some more variations real quick. Uh, we talked about um, the variations for the green essence of this sauce, right? We talked about the nuts, okay? As far as cheeses, I like um, tart cheeses for this. It's an oily preparation. Whenever I have an oily preparation, I want to balance that out with a little bit of tartness, right? Think of a teeter totter, and it's all over on the oil side, right? I want to add, I want a little tartness in there. Uh, so I tend to use tart cheeses like this Parmesan Reggiano, right? Uh, uh, Pecorino Romano is another cheese that you can use. The Greek sheep's milk hard cheese, Mazifera, is excellent. You can use that in here, that would work. Um, it's not a hard cheese, but think about feta, kind of tangy, and you can kind of blend it into your pesto, kind of as a as a, uh, uh, a variation. You could do a spinach feta pesto and, and lean in the Greek direction, right? Uh, sunflower seeds, great substitute for pine nuts, a lot cheaper. Yes, by the way, pine nuts cost a fortune. So that's why you're mostly seeing me use walnuts and, and my, my seeds over here, right? I got a couple sunflower seeds in here, right? I'm getting some super good comments this week. I got all these, these, food, these food people out there, these chefs. This is great. So um, let's see, other ingredients, right? Um, lemon, somebody mentioned, uh, Chef Jim mentioned some lemon earlier, right? Uh, I, now, if I want the flavor of lemon, I can add a little lemon zest in here, but if I'm adding acid in here to help with something like oxidation, you also, you often hear that as like, add a little lemon juice to keep it from turning brown. We do acidulated water for, for potatoes, right? You might add lemon juice or vinegar in your potatoes so they don't turn brown. Uh, you put lemon juice on apples so they don't turn brown, right? It's that idea, right? But there's another thing here at work, right? When we are working in the kitchen, we're teaching culinary arts, we tend to teach people that acid will destroy the color of chlorophyll-based plants, right? And so if I am cooking some green beans or something and I'm using acid with them, if they're sitting in that acid for any length of time, think about the last time you saw a pickled green bean, it turns that, that plastic green army man color, right? chlorophyll does not like acid. It destroys that color. And so I tend to avoid the, the, the lemon juice. If I want a lemon flavor in this, I like the lemon interplay with, with basil. I'll work zest in there and that way I don't get the acidity of that. Okay. So that's my little spiel on lemon, my pert opinion, if you will. Okay. Uh, other things here, you'll see other people um, work a tiny bit of soft butter in at the end of the process of this pesto. Let me kind of show you that again. Okay. So as it's spinning in the end, a couple of pieces of butter, what that's going to do, it adds more fat. It also butters like salt. It's going to bring flavors out a lot more, but it also kind of makes the whole thing look like a creamy green. It gives it kind of a different color shade. Uh, what I what I, when I, the consistency that I like with pesto is kind of, it flows a little bit, right? I, I kind of like mine a little bit soft, right? When I do the butter and then I refrigerate that, um, one thing that you will see is that butter solidifies in there. You'll also see this extra virgin olive oil solidify a little bit too, but the butter gets pretty firm. So when you want to use it again, you kind of have to bring it out and let it soften at room temperature for a little bit, or maybe, you know, zap it for one second or something like that, right? But, um, so I tend not to do the butter thing. I kind of played around with it, but I, I kind of felt like meh. Um, butter does kind of, uh, uh, when it chills, it kind of encapsulates or, or kind of covers everything, protects it from oxygen. So it does help your color a little bit. But uh, um, for the most part, I, I, I it's just a, an option there. Oh, another thing about the butter, I could see myself using that if I'm going to be making like a, a, a cream sauce or something where I'm just finishing at the end. I melt that pesto with the butter in it in, and it's like I'm finishing a sauce with butter. Uh, the thing I don't like, uh, I, I don't really like cooking my 
pesto into sauces though. That's what you're going to see today. I don't really like doing that because when I do that, the cheese in the pesto tends to coagulate a little bit in the sauce and then it just gums up and sticks to the pan and everything. It's really kind of nasty. So um, I tend to like using my pesto kind of fresh unless I'm, I'm grilling chicken and using it as a marinade or I'm making a pizza or something like that, right? Or I'm tossing on veggies and roasting them or, or things like that, right? So um, yeah, I, I tend to uh, uh, not use the butter. So let's talk about some other variations on this, right? Hey, Chef Eric, I got all kind of chefs out there today. This is awesome. Okay, salts verde. I don't know if you've ever heard this one. This is not salsa verde. This is French, right? It's like flatly parsley. It's like Cheryl, that's the, uh, I had a buddy, uh, uh, Eric from D. Miller Meats. He always calls Cheryl though. What the hell is this herb? It's like I taste it, but I don't quite know what it is. What the hell is that? That's what he calls Cheryl, right? It's, uh, you see it a lot in French cuisine. Uh, chives, so far it's like parsley, Cheryl chives. That's your fine herbs, right? Um, uh, some garlic, some shallot, anchovy is in there, capers are in there. It's kind of acidic, right? Um, and this is, this is a, uh, and, and it's also got uh, olive oil in there, right? This is another one of those pesto type sauces, but it's kind of a French version. It takes a turn and it's really, really acidic, right? Let's see, Eric likes using toasted pepitas, uh, the toasted pumpkin seeds. I got a few in here, but I didn't toast them. They're inexpensive, used uh, every nut, but walnuts, because I'm deadly allergic to them and many guests are. You're absolutely right about that. We gotta be really, really careful with a lot of these, these tree nuts, right? That's one of your, your most, uh, most popular allergens, okay? The most common allergens are what I mean to say, right? So we just mentioned, we're talking about variations on pesto, right? We just mentioned um, France's sauce verte or green sauce, right? Um, uh, let's see, chimichurri, isn't that kind of pesto-like, right? Oftentimes that's the version that's kind of done on a cutting board, right? You're gonna see shallots, chilies, garlic in there, um, uh, 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 and cilantro, right? Lots and lots of cilantro, parsley, uh, and maybe a little bit of vinegar too. It's an acidic uh, preparation, okay? So that's chimichurri. We see that on, you know, churrascaria cuisine, right? Uh, uh, you can use it as a marinade and you can use it as a sauce, right? Um, let's see another one. Oh, uh, uh, I used to do a Thai version all the time, like a mint version, right? So mint, ginger, garlic, scallion, that's my Asian mirepoix, as I say, right? Uh, sesame seeds in there, work those in as your nut, um, or peanuts and or peanuts, right? So I'll work peanuts into that, another allergen, right? Deadly allergic allergen. Um, and use some sesame oil and peanut oil for that one, right? And I'll make, uh, you know, throw in a couple things, right? Little chilies and things like that, but I can make a, a, a Thai pesto, right? A mint pesto. Um, sauce romesco is another one. This is another Italian one. It's kind of from the other side of Northern Italy, right? Uh, but romesco is like charred tomatoes, charred bell peppers. You'll get some chilies in there, the Calabrian chilies, little teeny things, kind of spicy. Um, uh, almonds in there. And then that one is kind of, uh, it, uh, it's got garlic, of course, but that one's kind of tightened up with breadcrumbs instead of having the nuts in there, right? And then you're going to work in enough olive oil to get the right consistency for that, okay? So um, lots and lots of variations on this. They're all kind of the same technique as making pesto, right? All of these things kind of work in a food processor, a mortar pestle, um, and, and kind of that's it, right? French salsa verde with egg. <laughs> I'm, uh, deep, I, I've never put egg in mine. I wonder if you're saying it with eggs. Uh, salsa verde with eggs would be delicious, okay? So now that I've got my pasta, my pasta's done, my pesto's done, I'm just going to make a little dinner for myself and just show you how quick and easy this is, okay? So I've got uh, my bowl here. I've got a stainless steel bowl. I've got my pasta that's still warm. I'm going to toss it on in there. Kind of sticking. It was sitting. Okay. I'm going to add in a little bit of my fresh pesto. Let me grab a spoon. All right, so I'm just gonna take a little bit right out of my food processor. Some of my chefs out there might be uh, wondering if I uh, cook this pasta a little longer than I like, and I probably did. I'm gonna toss in a little bit more. Remember, I didn't use all of my um, cheese earlier, so I'm gonna throw some more in now. I'm gonna drop in, you know, this is my dinner, so I'm gonna drop in a little bit of veggie. I'm gonna throw some tomatoes in there. I got some of those little uh, uh, beautiful little cherry tomatoes got them right there. Those are going in. And I'm gonna get my pasta water and just add a little bit of that to just get a nice saucy consistency. I'll check my seasoning and that's gonna be about it. As you can see, I'm not really cooking my pesto here. 
Let me set this on here. And you can see I saved my pasta water. I'm just gonna drizzle a little about it, little bit of that in there. This hot water and that pasta is gonna melt the cheese I put in there, but it's not gonna coagulate that cheese. I'm just gonna give it some tosses. Oh, I gotta add a little salt too, as long as I'm tossing things. I need enough salt in here to season all of that starch in the pasta. So that's a pretty good amount. And keep on tossing. And if I need a little more pesto, I think I will add it. I think I'm gonna do that now. Drop a few. I think uh, you guys might have heard a cat meowing a second ago. All right. Hey, thanks a lot, Chef Steve. Nice to see you. And Ms. Jean is out there. Pissola with parsley, garlic, anchovy. Excellent one, right? Pissolade uh, sauce is another one that she brought up. All of these sauces, you can kind of look them up if you're unfamiliar with them. And uh, once you know them, they're super easy. None of the sauces I've mentioned here, none of the sauces I've mentioned here are any harder than what you saw me do with the pesto. The hardest job of this whole pesto is cleaning all that basil. I'm gonna grab one noodle out there, out of there and give it a try. I'm using a ziti, by the way. By the way, a tube-shaped pasta. As I've always said, it is a sauce delivery system. It's all full of the pesto in there. Mmm, it's beautiful. Wow. Oh. Mmm. I'm pretty happy with that, right? Let me go ahead and bowl some of this up and uh, we'll see if anybody's got any other questions or comments. I've got a pretty short day today, right? Uh, this, it's usually just a little bit longer. Let me get my uh, favorite pasta bowls. I don't know why anybody eats pasta in anything but a ramen bowl. That's how I roll. <laughs> it just makes sense. And there it all goes. This garlic in here is uh, fresh and raw, okay? It's not cooked. So, you know, going too much garlic would be a little strong for this. I'm making two bowls. And I want more than that. And there it is. Let me throw a few chair, uh, tomato pieces around. Get that tomato off of there, please. A little yellow. A couple more tomato pieces. And we're almost there, people. There's some tomato. I got to go searching for them. Here's a few more. Boom. And then I've got just a little more parm for the top that I saved. I'm clean that up. How much pesto did I use? Enough pesto for every bite. That's the answer. Whenever you're saucing pasta, you need enough sauce to, for every bite of pasta in there. Otherwise it's drying out. Okay, so by the way, this is the real stuff. I had one of these containers. I, I got a funky container, but this isn't the plastic Parmesan cheese that you see at the store. This is the real stuff. And I'm topping it. And ladies and gentlemen, that's dinner. That is pasta. And that is pesto. Tons of ideas. Hey, you are welcome, Mr. Evan. A little more on there. And that was an easy, easy day today. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I threw down a couple of per opinions about pasta I hope I didn't offend anyone. I hope no one got the vapors, okay? Uh, so that's basically the show for tonight, people. Let me set this aside. Um, so do me a favor. Don't forget to run over and subscribe to the Industry Cooking channel on the YouTube machine, okay? You're going to see edited versions, which are really probably not quite as sad as what you're witnessing here, okay? Um, <laughs> Uh, the saddest show on, on the internet, right? If you're looking for the sad show experience, though, you can always join me here on Mondays, okay? Check out the industry cooking community. That's where I do my live shows here. And uh, you're going to see some very live, very sad shows every Monday, okay? You can also find chefs over there, teachers. You can see all these people that showed up today. It was so awesome, okay? You're going to see a ton of like-minded food folk in that region over there. So go ahead and check out the industry cooking a uh, uh, community, okay? Share your kitchen event or adventures, share your side jam, share whatever you want to promote that you do in the food world. The thing is, show what you do. Don't don't post other stuff. If Rachel Ray wants her stuff in my community, let her join and post it. Now, that's it for this week's show. Try making some pesto this week and shout out in the community and tell it tell it, tell us how it went and tell us how good it made you feel, okay? I'm Dave Nelson. 
And I'll be back next week for, with some more ripping kitchen wisdom for you. Till then, keep on cooking because as everybody knows, the party is always, always in the kitchen. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the end of the show. Wait for it. Wait, wait. Ladies and gentlemen, class is dismissed. <laughs>